I'm Heather Hudson, and I'm a filmmaker, and I made this film here, The Women in the Waves 2. Hey, guys. My name is Mary Grace Bagalso. What is your name? <laughs> my name is Clarice. Uh, my name is Mikhail Adamchuk. Um, I'm Haley. <laughs> I'm Clarice. What is the most difficult thing about being a female surfer? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, what is the most difficult thing about being a, a female surfer? I don't think anything's difficult. Um, if it's crowded and you just started surfing, maybe catching a wave and getting one, but it takes persistence. I don't think it's that hard, actually. You just got to exist. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, my arms are too short to get around my board. <laughs> so I have a hard time. I have to carry it on my head sometimes. <laughs> Having your bikini stay on. I was wondering, what do you recommend about that? Tie it really tight. I got it. Going up against friends in a contest <laughs> that are really close to you. Who inspired you to start surfing in the first place? Um, my high school boyfriend. I saw him surfing. I was sitting on the beach, and I was a young teenager, and I said, I can do that. And this is back in the 70s when um, the girls just weren't getting out in the water so persistence, persistence. yeah um, surfing was an inspiration from snowboarding and I was also my college boyfriend and my heroes are Rel Sun and Donald Takayama <laughs> who inspired you to start surfing in the first place you <laughs> you did that's true I drug her into the water she spent five years in Hawaii without six years I think without surfing and I had to drag her into the water, and now she wants to go every single day. <laughs> One of my coworkers, her name is Mary Grace Bagalso, and she has actually been sponsored by Patagonia, and she is an amazing surfer and amazing role model, and I want to be just like her. <laughs> my parents and grandparents surf, so I wanted to carry on the tradition. So. Who is your most favorite surfer of all time? Ooh, God. I, I don't have an all-time favorite. I have a lot of people that I'm inspired by and a lot of them are um, just women that I've seen out in the water and you learn from them by watching um, but you know gosh Rel Sun was always an inspiration and uh, Heart of the Sea was one of my favorite films and that I loved watching all those old now they're old um, films with, on VHS <laughs> can I just say Mary Grace because she's amazing and I know her so it's personal probably real son because of her style <laughs> yeah long borders <laughs> you know that at the wedge in Newport and at Point Panic in Honolulu those breaks are limited to body surfers only at most times <laughs> Do you think there would be any merit in proposing that one or two surfing breaks be limited to females only at certain times? Oh, that's a good question. Sure. Why not? <laughs> Why not? I mean, I, I lived in Newport when I was a little kid, and back then they only allowed body surfing, but now they're surfing there, which is amazing to me. But no, I, why not? Give them an hour. Give them two. <laughs> oh, that's a loaded question. Um, only if I'm in the water. <laughs> Other than that, I'm not sure. I can't say. Maybe during a women's surf contest. Do we get our own wave? No, because I, I like when guys are out there. <laughs> because they're beautiful to look at. She likes fishing in the water for men as much as she likes surfing. <laughs> no, because I think the waves belong to everybody. I think there's enough water for us to share. Not really, because surfing is kind of for like everybody, I guess. So I I think that it makes it more more fun when you can do it with males and females. So yeah. What about you? Same thing. Yeah, very much. Aloha. 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 Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here.
Museum of Arts Doris Duke Theater. My name is Sarah and I have the great privilege of working here. And um, thank you so much for joining us for our ninth annual Honolulu Surf Film Festival. Yeah. For our screening today, we're going to be screening Lunar and La Maestra, followed by an amazing film called The Women and the Waves 2. And the director, Heather Hudson, will say a few words before we start. Thank you so much for coming, and I know Mary Vigalso is here. One of my six. And I know a lot of you know Mary, so thank you so much for coming. And I filmed last year here and the year before, just a quick trip. And uh, Tripler was amazing to let me in and on a very short notice. And um, enjoy it, and enjoy the two films ahead of it. So, All right, thank you so much. Enjoy, Bye. everyone. Yeah, I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you. The first one, so Heather, you yeah. made The Women and the Waves in 2009. Yeah. So what inspired you to create the sequel, The Women and the Waves 2? Well, um, this film featured Sue and Ashley Lloyd Thompson, who were both in my first film. And they were very connected in the first film. And um, there were 10 women in that one. And uh, the same, about two and a half years ago, almost three now, um, Zoo got her final cancer diagnosis and Ashley found out she was pregnant. And they're really good friends and I just thought, oh my God, I'm not done. So, I mean, I do this, um, it's a passion and it took, both films have taken me two years or more to make. So, um, you really have to want to make a film and uh, time, energy, and my family back there, <laughs> they know. My son, my husband. And well, how was the process different from the first time around? This your second uh, time now. Sorry, I haven't seen it in a while, and uh, <laughs> we screened it a few times, but it hits me in different ways. Um, let's see. What, we, what was the how was the, how, was the, how was the process different? Oh I mean, God. Okay, so the, the first film, I never made a film before. And it took two and a half years, and a good friend of mine um, was a filmmaker. He's not doing that anymore, but he was very technically savvy at filmmaking. And I said, I want to make a film about women. And I've served most of my life, and um, I just wanted to tell a story from the women's perspective. So the first film was actually kind of looking back, just by decade, just like, wow, this is what it's been like for women. Because all of a sudden, all these women started coming out, you know. I guess the 90s was a big push and then Blue Crush and all that. And now it's so common for women to be in the water and it's great. And um, But that was the push to make the first one. The second one was just um, present moment and life goes on and I just wanted to express that and then finding my six, I call them my stunning six. I just, yeah, it's been fun following them around and they're also different and very unique. I mean, yeah, your stunning six is definitely <laughs> a whole cast of characters. How did you guys meet? How did you know? Do you, you want to answer that, Mary? How we met? Um, so I met Heather actually through Zoof, who is the person that's in that film. And actually, Zoof is a nurse. She's a nurse that actually made me want to become a nurse. So I met her actually on the beach in Malibu, Zoof, and I told her like, what can I do to be like a superhero like you to be just surfing? And, sponsored by Patagonia and traveling the world. So I was like, I'm gonna do what Zoof does. And Zoof invited me to a surf trip in Mexico with Heather, and I didn't know Heather yet. And this was maybe like four years ago. And I knew she made a film, and I was like, please let me in your next surf film. But she also said, the film had just come out, and I'm like on the floor, going, oh my god, what did I just do? Because it's so time consuming, and yeah. And she said, make another film, and I'm like, I know. Yeah. And I did short films, but oh, this, the process too, by the way, I picked up my own camera the second time. So they're very different because I filmed most of this one and edited most of it. And then my final cut editor finished it and helped me with it and I directed him. But anyway, back to Zoom. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I, I met her in Mexico over a couple months. Yeah, but I knew her. I, she's amazing. And she, I knew her through uh, just in the 90s, I believe. She was on a lot of covers and competed. And so I knew who she was, and Zeus told me she was coming down on the trip. And I was like, oh, my God, Mary's an also. <laughs> She's wonderful. <laughs> I get intimidated sometimes. <laughs> have um, have all six of you like you know gone, met together constantly throughout the process after? Yeah, that's actually, a good question. Yeah, that's yeah. a really good question. Actually, the stunning six, as she puts it, are all a very courageous group of women. We differ from age like twenty to like sixty. Um, some of the movie doesn't say everything about every uh, person that's in it. But you have someone who's just really new to surfing as a professional, and then you have someone who's been like a world champion. And I was lucky enough to be one of the people that kind of sit in the middle where I can just surf and have someone who pay to go travel and run around the world and in the meanwhile become a nurse anesthetist. Um, you know. Well, and so meeting all of them together, uh, I had an idea to get all of them together because a few of them knew each other, Drew Zoop and myself, and the younger two hadn't met anybody, and um, Demi and Isabel. So uh, my friend Joni Sternbeck does those old, I don't know if any of you are familiar, I don't know if she's come to Hawaii to film people yet, but she has this camera from the 1800s, and she has a series called Surfland. So she just travels, and, and they're just amazing images. So in the first film I had, each woman had an individual shot when she was introduced. And this one was, I wanted a group shot. And we made it happen. So all the girls ended up in Santa Barbara on November 7th. And Joni came in town. And, and I had that idea that I wanted them lined up like that. And it happened. So, And that's on the poster. Yeah. That's on the poster. Yeah. A lot of work. A lot of work. That's the first day they opened that. So, yeah. That was cool. Yeah. Oh, OK. And how, how long was the process? I mean, because. You know, Zoo passed away in 2013, this film came yeah. out sort of last well, year. Well, uh, she passed away two years ago in December, and my goal was to, uh, the, the news came in September of 2013, so I thought, oh gosh, I have to make another film, and I really didn't know what was going to happen. I kind of go with the flow when I make these. I kind of get these ideas in my head, but they don't have words. Like, I write my, my synopsis at the end, basically. <laughs> I have to have something writing of what, the, what it's going to be, what, what I'm trying to tell, but I, um, uh, oh, and with me, Pre is Presley here? Presley one? There's Presley, he's in the back, and he's from Kauai, and uh, I really wanted to um, find someone to um, explain what the paddle out is, because a lot of people don't know, and we took, uh, Zoom's ashes were, are all over um, the Pacific, and her ashes were given to a lot of friends and family, and so I met Presley last summer, and he uh, told a story about Duke Kanemoku, and um, so I felt like it fit, because we had all the, the ashes going down, and those are the ones in Mexico at a small paddle out for, for Zoo, so. That's yeah. amazing. Um, so let's open up the questions to the audience. Does anyone have a question? Yes. How on earth did you get so much footage without any other surfers in it? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. Well, I saved that all for the, the, for the today, State of Surfing Today. That's what that um, segment's called. And I used my home break for every shot, and it's Rincon, California. <laughs> but those are the worst, most crowded days, you know, and um, with the internet, you know, and those are the days, and, you know, it's crowded everywhere now. But, uh, but you know, I mean, I was filming her at Queens one day, and there were a lot of people right there. And somehow, you know, the camera can just kind of follow, and you can cut it. But I like to show, I also like to show people paddling. You know, a lot of surf movies don't show the whole picture. And um, people falling and going down, you know, and underwater. So it was, it's fun. Um, yeah. Right there. Yes. Yeah. How did you get the shot with the shark? A shark? A oh, turtle? The dolphin. Oh yeah. We were down in Costa Rica and I had my camera and I the the boat driver we'd gone across the bay and surf. Um, I didn't have my camera that day, we were surfing. I wasn't gonna use it for that, but on the boat ride. So I laid down 
on the front of the boat and I just held the camera as close to the water as I could. And that's when they were swimming on, you know, underwater. That, or I was above the surface and down. And then that other shot when they were under the boat and they went down, I just held the camera underwater for a long time. We were going slow and I didn't know if I had a shot or not, but I got that one shot. That was fun. I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> I can't. She's from Costa Rica. Oh, okay. I'll tell you later. They have those papers. They're like, you're not going to tell people where you are. And I'm like, no, that's. I actually have a poster about Central America because, you know, I don't, there's a certain spot, but I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Everybody knows where everywhere is. All right, right here? Yes, you. Yeah, um, Mary, at what age did you officially learn how to surf? Um, I would say probably 17, because I never had been on the surfboard until I actually came to canoes and rented the surfboard without my parents knowing. <laughs> I was wearing like a tiger-striped pink and orange bikini, too. <laughs> I'll never forget, it changed my life. About 17, but I was body surfing and bodyboarding before. Probably I was like nine, ten. Yeah, but I'll never forget that bikini. <laughs> <laughs> Bikinis are important to girls. We love them. <laughs> All right, and I think there was a question there. Uh, to Mary Grace, do you uh, uh, do you ever drop any surfisms when you're about to put a patient under, or to console a family, or you know, my boss is right here. <laughs> um, I, I guess when I think about putting someone to sleep, uh, it's probably the last thing on my mind. I'm pretty focused on that person because um, I do look at them in the eye before they actually go to sleep. I don't know if they remember, but I always have a, I look at them in their eyes with my own so that they know that they're going to be well taken care of. So surfing is probably the last thing that's really on my mind when I'm looking at somebody. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's what I But before I come down here, I just wanted to say like, I don't know everyone in the audience, but I do know a lot of you. And it really means a lot for you to come out here and see Heather's film because she's pretty awesome and all of you <laughs> mean a lot to me. And if I don't know you, I'll share a wave in the water. I promise I'll make a job. Any other questions? Yes. Just how would you see your first film? Do you have a good time? Oh, yeah. Thanks for asking. Um, it's actually streaming on the Surf Network. And if you Google, I, actually, I have a website, thewomenandthewaves.com. And I updated my site, and you can learn more about every surfer. And the music page, we have all the music. And, um, yeah, but that's streaming, and then I also sell the DVDs and soundtracks and everything's on that site, so, yeah, thanks. Anyone else? Thank you for coming. I thought you never know the festival how the time stops, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Glad I got the sense enough, the sense enough to know Even after all this time, there's nothing that you own I find it hard to believe that we are really done Even after all this time, you are still the one Still the one Yes, you are still the one. Yes, you are. Thanks.